So welcome back to the channel everyone, Triple M here. In today's video, we're doing a side-by-side -side comparison between two of the best Wi-Fi 6 routers that's currently available. Now, these are gonna be in the budget category. So today we're comparing the Rehi AX3000 Wi-Fi 6 router against the TP-Link Archer AX55. Now, both are gonna be AX3000 routers, Wi-Fi 6, but in this video, we're gonna compare the specifications, get into the hardware. We're also gonna compare the user interface. And last but not least, we are gonna jump into some of the performance numbers and see which one comes out on top. So this video, it shouldn't be too long if you're new to the channel subscribe smash the notification bell let's go So let's jump into the specifications and some of the main features of both routers. Now, let's start out with the Ray E. As I mentioned, this is going to be a Wi Fi 6 router. This one is going to have dual band 2.4 and 5 gigahertz hour. speeds up to 2402 megabits per second on the 5 gigahertz and 574 on the 2.4 gigahertz. As far as the compatibility, this is going to support 802.11n, AX, B, as well as AC. Frequency on this is gonna be 160 megahertz, five high gain antennas, and Ray boasts that this is gonna cover up to 3,000 square feet and has up to 128 concurrent users. Now over to the TP-Link. The TP-Link, again, is gonna be a gigabit Wi-Fi 6 router with speeds up to 2,402 megabits per second on the five gigahertz and 574 on the 2.4 gigahertz. As far as the wireless communication, this is gonna support 802.11 NBAX, AC as well as G. So uh, similar to the Ray E, but this also supports G if anyone is still using that. As far as the antennas, you're gonna have four high gain antennas with beam forming technology to extend a strong network. This also has OFDMA technology, which makes your Wi-Fi stronger by allowing multiple clients. And last but not least, this does have an Intel chipset. So similar uh, as far as specifications, when we look at the price and normal price for the TP-Link is $129 and the normal price for the Ray-E is $112. Let's get into the hardware comparison. All right, so let's start out with a quick size comparison. So for the most part, these are going to be, I'll say pretty close in size and I'll put the exact measurement here um, on the screen. But uh, Ray-E may be a little bit bigger, just a little bit wider. Uh, as you can see that the TP-Link can fit um, directly inside of it for the most part. Part, uh, similar in size so if you're worried about uh, placement or finding a certain spot to put this in I don't think that would be an issue at all build quality is also going to be really similar uh, for the most part ventilation on top for the TP link on the ray is going to be both on the bottom and on the front so while we're on the bottom just know that both of these do have wall mounting options as you can see there all right so if you wanted to place this on the wall you do have the ability to do so as far as the the main difference that you guys can see we have four on the tp link versus five antennas on the ray so we'll see if that really makes a difference as far as overall speed and performance as far as the back of the unit uh we're gonna have a wi-fi on and off switch right here we also have the reset button we have a usb c port and this will allow you to essentially connect a hard drive that way you can go ahead and share media this has five ports uh, First one is going to be the WAN port, so this is where your network uh, main connection is going to come in from your modem, and you're going to have four gigabit Ethernet ports as well. To the right of that, we do have the power switch and the power inlet for your DC plug. So over to the Ray, we're going to have four total ports versus five on the TP-Link. We do have WAN right here, and we do have network all the way through. So this does have port aggregation as well, which means that you can combine two network ports for those high performance devices that require additional network stability. We do have the DC plug right here. We do have a reset pinhole and we do have the quick mesh button. So if you guys have seen my Ray reviews, I did a mesh system setup. I also did their Wi-Fi 6 router, which is a beast. And basically this button is gonna allow you to quickly press it to connect to mesh devices. Really cool and really easy to do. So let's talk a little bit about the antennas. I know this is important. Some people, how they mount their routers, they want the flexibility of being able to put the antennas in various directions. So for the TP-Link, you can see the antennas can be folded out on the side as well as on the top and you can rotate them 180 degrees in either direction so this is going to give you a lot of flexibility as far as mountains so maybe you want to put the two antennas on the side all the way out the ones up top you want to pivot them a certain direction you do have full flexibility all the way out all the way up and up to 100 degrees rotation. On the Ray-E, the antennas on the side does give you that same flexibility. You can fold it all the way out and you can pivot both antennas up to 180 degrees. You also have some pivot point where you can pivot the antenna inwards towards the unit. As far as the antennas on the back, the three antennas, you can't 
actually rotate them from side to side, but you can't flip them all the way out or you can't pivot them inward towards the unit. So in my opinion, TP-Link does have more flexibility, but I do think the limitation comes to the fact that the array he has more antennas, thus limited how much movement it's allowed to have. Another thing that I find is uh, really worth talking about is the power um, consumption of the power requirements for both units. So this is going to be TP-Link. As far as the specifications, the input is going to be 100 to 240 at 50 and 60 hertz at 8 amp. And the output on this is going to be 12 volts at 2 amps. Now the array again is going to be 140 volts at 50, 60 hertz at 6 amp. Output is going to be 12 volt, 1.5 amp. So as far as the, the output uh, looks like for the most part, um, TP-Link is going to require a little bit more. Not sure if that's relevant or not to what you look for when you're looking to buy a unit. But as far as just the size, the footprint, really similar. TP-Link being a little bit bigger. So here's a web UI for TP-Link. It does require you to sign up with an email. But once you sign up and get logged in, it does provide a lot of useful information. So network map is going to show you devices. Radio information is below as well as the password. And you can go in and edit those. You do have mesh devices, so you can add devices as well. And farther to the right, you do have your clients. Now within the client, you do have some settings that you can play with. So pretty much throttle whichever client you want to and you can go ahead and block that device as well next step is going to be the internet so it's going to allow you to fine tune your incoming internet connection you do have your wireless setup this does have the ofdma option that you can go ahead and turn on and it also has smart connect this is basically coexistence guys so which means that your 2.4 and your 5 gigahertz will be combined into one ssid further down you do have a guest network option that you can go ahead and turn on and you have the iot network you do have a home shield so home shield is basically a security system last tab is going to be your advanced settings so if you know what you're doing you can go in here you can set your ips you route in you see your ipv your vlan settings servers you can, dhcp servers you can set you can also go in uh, do your nat forward in you do have the usb option led control so you can go ahead and turn that on network performance so a lot built into this application now let's take a look at the web ui for ray now here we are and you can see i do have a couple devices however i have disconnected them except for the new device that i'm using currently go to your ssids you can see the different options there you do have the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz network and you also do have an option to configure your iot network in addition ray allows a dedicated game network which prioritizes those high bandwidth devices like your playstations like your pc gaming um, that way you won't have any issues while you're gaming online above that you have your gateway you have your switch you have your ap firewall ac home router bridges so a lot of options to configure up to the top over to the client so you can see everything that's essentially connected which network they're connected to where they are as far as traffic usage and you can go ahead and make some changes and within the devices you do have different categories so you have smartphones tablets watches pc so you can essentially click on whichever you want and it should basically tell you which device it's configured to you have a smart configuration so this gives me network access control optimization as well as uh, some delivery options as well ai diagnostic is built in this is a free addition so you can go ahead scan and see if you have any issues with your network all right so if you're over network wide you have a plethora of options you have network you have multi-wan same thing with devices you have nat options you have vpn options dynamic dns Overall, I just think this has a lot more built in, a lot more options to not only configure devices, but also security options um, that you can go ahead and play with. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into the speed test. So I did do a side by side comparison from equal distances. So you can see some of the distances right there from 10 feet, 20 feet, 30 feet, 60, as well as 80 feet, both interior and exterior. And really, this is just an aim just to see where the TP-Link stacks up versus Rehi. So on these graphs, Rehi is gonna be in green and TP-Link is gonna be in blue. So we can take a look at a comparison from 10 feet. Rehi was at 586, TP-Link is at 584. So not much in between them. Moved over to 20 feet, this was on the second floor. So we are going through the floorboard here. You can see a significant drop off in the TP-Link. Rehi scored a 546 and a TP-Link a 357. Now to the 30 foot distance, this was actually outside on the balcony. So we're going through a couple walls, it's including the exterior wall. And you can see Ray, he scored 285 and TP Link scored 225. Next we're outside, we're actually in the backyard in the back corner, roughly about 60 feet away. So we're all going through the floorboard, we're going through exterior walls, we're going through interior walls. So really 
almost as bad as it gets. You can see TP Link scored 26 on the download and Ray, he scored 71. And last but not least, this was actually outside, <laughs> outside of the property line. You can see 13 versus 16. So again, this is just another graph just showing the disparity between the two. So started out about equal, so 10 feet away in the same room, no obstructions. We see that Ray, he started to separate as we go through some of those walls, go through the floorboard, and it made a world of difference. Last thing I wanted to show you, just some of those upload speeds at the same distances, guys. So you can see, started out from the 10 feet, 22 versus 23 milliseconds, not much. 23 and 23, around the same again, 22. Again, when we go outside to the backyard, significant drop off or disparity between the Ray Heat and the TP Link. So in the back corner of the yard, you can see that uh, 60 feet distance, 22 still on Ray Heat and only three on TP Link. And when we went further back, you can see TP Link dropped off to one millisecond and the Ray Heat was still maintaining at 13 milliseconds ping so overall both good routers in my opinion so let's talk about some of the differences and some of the standouts and just also my opinion of which one i would take if i had the option between the two so tp link is a solid router guys it does have a lot of cool features built in it does have more ports than the ray so so that's one of for tp link in addition it also has the usb port that means if you're looking to share your files over the network this would be a great router to do that as far as build quality build quality is going to be pretty good not much in between them definitely going to depend on preferences for me the tp link application in my opinion wasn't as detailed it wasn't as easy to follow as the ray he application last thing i want to add to that is that there's some of the features that you have access to on the ray he the tp link actually charges for that that's another thing to keep in mind as far as the ray router uh, of course only has three ports four ports total one is going to be for your WAN port but it does have port aggregation which does allow you to actually combine ports for maximum throughput in addition this also has five antennas instead of four we did see that in the speed comparison as far as the coverage uh, this just gave me a more coverage over a broader area which I always look for in a router just to be able to get network away from the house is a big win for me and the app again is uh, a little bit better than tp link a lot built in that i didn't have to pay for and for that reason i would pick the ray he over the tp link this is a better bang for the buck in my opinion it's cost less the app is a little bit better you have more antennas more coverage and those are extremely important to me so drop your thoughts in the comment section let me know what you think i will be leaving a link to the ray he in the description if you want to go ahead and pick it up if you're new to the channel subscribe smash the notification bell thank you for watching and i'll catch you on the next one